Mr. Ed here. Today is May 18th, 2018. And you see this little garage I'm in right now. It's a shed. Uh, you're not going to believe this. Not one, not two, but three hives in this, in this shed. And the hive that we're going to be removing today is located in, in the corner right here. And just to, just to give you a little thrill, I'm going to show you what it looks like on, on the camera. And this thing is going to be a big one. Check this out. All right, folks, look at this hive. That thing goes from the base. I'll show, show the dots. The base, uh, you really can't pick it up on the camera, is right about a foot from the bottom. And then look at this, how high it goes up. All the way to the ceiling. <laughs> and it's that stud looks like it's about a 12 inch stud. So that's what we're going to be working on today. Before we move it, all the videos that, that I, I, I do, on most of my re videos at least, I use the BVAC. And what I wanted to do before I started the, the video was to actually give a demonstration of a piece-by-piece -piece demonstration of the video of the BVAC that I use. And the reason I want to do that is because there's so many people out there questioning, you know, um, BVACs, you know, do they, do they kill the bees? Uh, how do they work? And there are many styles of, of, of BVACs. And the one that, that I use, the particular style I use, is called a, a robo style. And that style of BVAC is one that bees are not dumped into the hive, but rather allow the, after the bees are vacuumed, the comb is then reunited with the bees that were vacuumed by placing them on the top. So I'm going to break this one down right now and show you the pieces that I use and how it's very simple. Even you could build it if you have a little bit of carpentry skills, you could build this. And to be able to, to, to vacuum bees uh, yourself. So let's go ahead and break this thing down a little bit. The basic components of, of a vac was one is the vacuum itself. And the way I, I've decided to do this BVAC to build my BVAC was I used a detachable vacuum motor. And the reason I, I use a, a detachable vacuum motor is I didn't want to carry around a whole nother shop vac with me. So I chose to use just a detachable motor that I place on my BVAC itself. You can use a regular shop vac and, and all you do is the hole in the top, you just drill a hole to, to stick your hose in it. Anything to be able to create the vacuum, to start that vacuum in there. Not, like I said, I just use a vacuum head. And to, to do that, you have to accommodate that, that head. Whether you're going to use a, a shop vac hose that you would stick somewhere on your lid or the, the separated vacuum head. So this is the, the, the hole that my vacuum head goes into. Now the one that's really, one thing that's very important that you have to have on, on this is a vent hole. Alright, so you have to have a way of controlling the amount of pressure or vacuum inside of that, inside of your, your vacuum area. Because if you have too much pressure, you're going to kill the bees with it. You're going to suck them through the hose and it's going to kill them going through that hose and the, the amount of pressure, you'll wind up with a box full of dead bees. So you have to be able to bleed off vacuum. And this little gate right here, it's just something I've, I put onto my box. I regulate the pressure of the, the box. By opening it, I bleed off pressure. By bleeding off pressure, you decrease the amount of vacuum in your box. So that's the real trick, is finding that sweet spot in your regulator as to how much pressure that you have, that you have enough pressure to vacuum bees, but at the same time not to kill bees. So I like to be on the little low side of it. I'd rather vacuum the bees and, and spend a little bit more time vacuuming than, than killing them. So I tend to leave it open a little bit more to bleed off more pressure. That way I'm not worried about the bees. So this is the really important part. The, the vacuum that you use, that you can use anything. But um, the, you still need to do something to be able to bleed off pressure. So that's an important thing. The next part is the screen that separates the vacuum head from the body of vacuum bees. 
what this screen does is keeps the bees trapped inside of here as well as when I finish vacuuming the bees and I remove this top piece it will then allow all the heat that's built up in here to escape through the top of this. Then the other thing that this screen is used for is it will pull out and as you pull it out it comes out and now the bees are able to come from the bottom of the box escape through this opening right here and then climb onto the comb that which is the box on top of them. So this screen is very very important um, and, and by having the screen that pulls in uh, pulls out it, it then allows you the ability of not being stung by your bees because the, vac, the, the comb box is sitting on top of this. Now you still get, get stung from the ones when you open the gate, but <laughs> not as bad. And the, the next thing is I use just a regular deep super for the containment of the bees. And what's great about using this super is that it has frames in it. Now a lot of bee vacs it, there is no accommodation for bees once they are vacuumed up. They're just hanging on themselves, hanging on the inside of the box, and the closer the bees are to each other, the more heat they generate. So we want to we want to be able to get that heat and kind of dissipate it away from them because heat will kill these bees really quick, particularly um, as their summer comes on to us and the heat temperature goes up. So the, by using frames, and there's ten of them inside of here. It enables the bees to be able to crawl up on the frames and then to spread out uh, in that box. Instead of being all balled up, which is bees like to do, they ball up, they spread out, and that way they're not, they, don't, they tend not to overheat. And so by having the 10 frames in this box, we really take care of that heat problem. On the bottom of this is my bottom box. And what this box is, is simply where our vacuum box sits on top of. And if you can see, the bottom of this is ramped. It, it elevates, it goes up. And so what happens as the bees are vacuumed in the bottom, they then walk up this space and then walk onto the frames. Now, there's no pressure inside. It's almost like dead air inside of here. So it's the bees can move around freely. They're not being bounced around or anything. So they move up. They walk up the little ramp and then they start walking on the frames. So this ramp is a really, really great thing for them. Instead of being flat, the bees have to kind of like jump <laughs> or fly or walk up the sides. They just walk up the elevation and then onto the frames themselves. The other thing on this one, I also have some handles on it that I can grab the whole entire box and lift it up once and, and then they also serve as a function of putting my strap to hold the whole thing together. The last thing that I want to talk about is the gate where our hose hooks in. Now this gate, I love these types of gates because they open and close. You can see, you can see, you can see that. They open and they close. And by opening and closing it allows you the freedom of turning off your vacuum clean, your B-Vac, and by turning it off, once you turn it off, the bees can then come out. Well, by closing the gate on them, then the bees can't come out. So you can turn off the vac, work on, on, your, on your removal, cut comb, do whatever you need to do, and then when you're ready to start up again, open up your gate, and then start back again, and it'll start working again. So these, these gates are really important, and this one, I think this is a two inch gate and and you can find these gates they're only about four bucks uh, and if you go to the shop back website um, they they have these things on there and you can find them for that and they I attach it to a, a two inch hose so let me show you another really interesting thing about this beat back all right so I've, I've reassembled the the vacuum to show you uh, an aspect of it of how the vacuum works. So as it's sitting here, you can see you just lift it up and the whole thing will, will come apart. But once I once I turn on the vacuum itself, the whole box will go. The whole box. Now 
Now that's great when you're vacuuming because you don't have to worry if your box falls over, uh, the bees won't come out. However, I don't trust that, that, that aspect of that box holding. So I'll take a little strap and I'll strap it around the handles, the motor head, and then to the other handle, cinch it down. And that way, I'll, if, it, if something should happen to the back, if it should fall off the stand, I know it's not coming apart and I know, and I know bees aren't going to come out. All right, I think I've given a basic explanation of this back. Like I said, there's lots of different types of backs, but for me, this, this particular type, this robo type, uh, with the ability of not dumping bees and not dumping the trash that you vacuum up is very important to me. So this is why I choose this style of, of bee box. So that's about the presentation of the, the bee vac, and I think it's now time to start doing some wrangling on these bees. So by the grace of God, we get these bees vacuumed out of here, and they're going up to Laranja today. So that's where that's where we're headed after to after we do the removal, and I'll show you then the release of the bees how we do that. Let's get to wrangling. Well, 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 look at the size of this one. Ooh, woo. And it appears that these bees have swarmed recently because I would have thought there would have been more bees. There's a lot of old brood right on the outside right there. I don't see a lot of honeycomb in here. Nectar, but I don't see much capped honey. All right, time to start removing some of this comb. Well, vacuuming bees and removing comb. And you know I'm looking for the queen. <laughs> Five pieces cut out, the long pieces, and still got all this upper piece. No sign of the queen, but lots, lots of new brood. So my estimation is how it's swarming already. Nah, they hadn't swarmed yet. I only saw just a few drones. So again, it's just all indications of the hive hadn't swarmed yet. And that queen is a laying. I'm going to get back to cutting out this comb and I think I'm going to have to remove off this next sheet of paneling as well because I see the bees are running behind that tin through that corrugation how it's elevated like that they can run through that and they're running through the other piece right there so our queen she could have done that I don't see her that's what I'm going to have to take the other one off all right let's get back up vacuum and beans, cut and cut. And did I say, here's the other part of the hive. Look at this. Oh my word. And this is all the honey stores over here. There's no brood over here. This is all honey. That's why I say, I, 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 I was pretty sure the queen was gonna run over here. And so we got bees gathering at the top and the bottom. I'm gonna start vacuuming on this side. I do not want them to run any further. I see them up at the top running more. So I'm going to get busy vacuuming bees, and I'm looking for our queen, because now we, we got her. We're homing in on her. Thank you, Jesus! Woo! <laughs> I 
another battle well fought, but in the end she gave it up. Wow, what a monster queen. Man, all right, we're just about done with this thing. I'm going to finish back in these bees and show you what we got. Lots of honey, lots of bees, lots of comb, lots of everything, and a big old fat butted queen. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! It ain't there no more. Now it's a beast. You still have a little bit more vacuuming to do. Get that done, and uh, I'll show you the, the bees and the comb. All right, we're picking everything up, getting things straightened out, and putting the load up back in the van. Show you the uh, brew that we got framed up. I think we got six frames of it. Look at this. It's that thin stuff, so you have to put four across on it. One. Two, three, four, five. So we got five cam uh, frames of brood, and then we did frame up another partial frame of brood along with this whole honey frame as well. And now let me show you the bees. They are. Wow. I'm telling you, we got we're probably in that, that 18, 20,000 range. All right, so we're headed up to Laranja right now, and we'll show you how we go ahead and take that the screen, this screen right here. We'll pull that screen out, let our bees get back on top, and reunite with that queen right there. So we'll catch y'all up in Laranja. So we got our box set up now on our stand. Now this is our vacuum bees right here. We got our queen right here. And this is the screen that we're going to pull out and let the bees that we vacuum walk up into it. So what I'm going to do right now is going to grab the, the box that we had, all the, the removed comb that we rubber band up. We're going to grab that box and we're going to set it right on top of our screen box. So we grab our box and we set it up on our screen. It's all set now. Now tomorrow, what's going to happen tomorrow, and I won't show this part on the video, but we have to remove our our vacuum box and our vacuum box bottom and our screen and put our screen bottom board on. So that's really the only thing that you're not going to see. But tomorrow, we'll go and remove the all of this stuff below the box. We'll remove it, set the screen bottom board down, and then set our cut comb right on top of our screen board and that's a deal so that's all we have so what we're gonna do right now is gonna grab our queen and we're gonna release her onto the comb and let her start walking around and hopefully she won't fly off <laughs> that's happened to me a few times so we grab some of this comb right here we're gonna open it up She's just walking around. She's not. She's not real lively, but she's walking around. Now yeah, she's coming out. All right. Here she is on our comb. And we're going to set her in the box. We're going to put our inner cover. Put our inner cover on it. And now our telescoping cover. And now we're ready to release the bees. When I, when I pull the screen out, I only have to pull it out about three or four inches. I don't need to pull the whole screen out. That way it'll, the bees will slowly migrate up inside of there. So we just pull it out just a little bit, just enough to get the bees to start climbing up inside the box. So 
So we pull it out a little bit. And now we're going to open up the gate and let them fly. That's always a good sign when you see the bees come flying out of there. So that's all I got for you in this one. This is a great, a great video. I mean, we got the queen, got the bees. Everybody's happy. I think the bees will be happy in this place. It won't be killed. So that's a really good thing. So thanks for watching. Keep on watching. I'll be making more. God bless. Mr. Ed, I'm out of here until the next video.